Hey guys, I'm Dov, and today I'm back with more Total War Warhammer 2 Mortal Empires testing. We're here today with the Empire, going to be testing them up against the uh, Dark Elves and the High Elves. And the Empire is in a bit of a rough spot right now in terms of the balance of the game, and I'm doing some tests to see if I can put my finger on exactly what that is. Uh, Bretonia is also in a really tough spot as well, and with the imminent release of the reprisal update, I wanted to run through some tests real quick to see if we could come up with some concrete uh, suggestions for Creative Assembly in how to help uh, implement fixes for these factions. Of course, Creative Assembly very much has their own ideas of uh, how to fix and implement things, so... You know, uh, in addition to, you know, all the data that they gather, just wanted to see if maybe we could, as a community, come up with, the, come up with a few suggestions of ways to improve the balance of the game. So uh, let's go ahead and take a look here. First, I'm going to be comparing head-to-head -head, uh, handgunners and dark shards. Of course, uh, handgunners do have much longer range, so we are going to account for that in that test. You can see uh, Kickin' JP, who's helping with this particular test, moving right to the edge of the range there. It's not exactly perfect, but uh, we're just getting things kind of all lined up here, and going to be just testing the DPS. We do have three Dark Shards with shields and three regular Dark Shards facing up against six handgunners. So, uh, you know, Dark Shards are slightly more expensive with the shields. Um, you know, we'll see how the damage output is, but the Missile Block Chance definitely helps. They do have Silver Shields, which gives them a very high Missile Block Chance of 55%, which is really, really nice course does pertain to handgunner fire. Handgunners do have longer range, um, but of course they can't fire over other units. They do get obstructed line of sight, being gunpowder units, so we'll go ahead and just continue to fast forward here as we were kind of chatting and deciding how's the best to test. Um, so they're going to move just slightly inside range here, I believe, and then we'll uh, open up shots. So just a moment here. And keep in mind as well that Dark Shards, uh, let's see, okay, so the uh, skirmish fight has begun here, and immediately you can see how big of a difference those shields make. That 55% missile block chance is absolutely huge, and it's definitely going to help these three uh, Dark Shards here trade much more effectively. But uh, let's go ahead and see what happens. We'll go ahead and fast forward because there's a lot of testing to get through here. But uh, Dark Shards, let's look at their melee stats, 18 and 16 for the regular Dark Shards versus 16 and 17, so roughly equivalent melee stats. Of course, the shields do have slightly higher melee defense at 22, so they would probably win in the melee engagement there. But of course, you don't really want your skirmishers in melee, but it is worth no noting that uh, Dark Shards are you know, uh, slightly better in melee, at least with the shields. So you can see here the three units with the shields easily cleaning up the three uh, the three handgunners without shields here. The other fight's going to be a lot closer. It looks like we've been able to route off one Dark Shard here. The other two are wavering, so I do believe the handgunners are going to carry this side. So you can see how much of a difference those shields make. And, uh, you know, for a, a cost-equivalent unit, this is a pretty cost-effective trade. Again, keep in mind that handgunners, while they do have longer range, can't fire over their own units, uh, their own units of infantry and so on. They get obstructed line of sight. So uh, something to make a note of as well. So now that testing's done, we're going to pull these guys back. So uh, definitely, if you're playing the Dark Elves in this matchup, you do want to bring the Dark Shards with the shields. And, uh, yeah, not exactly an, an effective trade, but... We'll go ahead and bring up the infantry next. We're going to be testing uh, basic uh, state troops against their Dark Elf counterparts. So uh, Dread Spears against Spearmen, Swordsmen against uh, Bleak Swords. We are also going to test Flagellants against uh, Black Art Corsairs as well as Witch Elves. And Great Swords against Harganeth Executioners and Black Art of Nagaron. So... Um, in terms of matchups, I'm expecting the Empire to lose all across the line here. All, all the matchups that we've got them facing up against uh, the units are significantly cheaper on the Empire side of the battlefield, so you would expect them to lose, but we really what we're looking for is to see if they trade cost-effectively. Uh, you know, because if you can outnumber the Dark Elves, then and drag them down with greater numbers, you know, as long as they trade cost-effectively, it should still work, right? So let's see how it goes. Flagellants are, uh, you know, a bit of an inter interesting unit. Um, a lot of other units of this class have gained anti-infantry. Flagellants, with their uh, frenzy up, which it's always up because they're unbreakable, uh, do have 40 weapon strength, which is pretty decent. But, uh, you know, a lot of other units of this class do have anti-infantry. So let's zoom over to this side of the battlefield and watch as these forces do come together on this side. 
got the great swords fighting these the Harganeth Executioners and the Black Guard here. Harganeth Executioners are definitely going to carry this fight. They've got vastly superior combat stats. Uh, meanwhile, the uh, Black Guard of Nagarond are going to win out th this fight, but it is a little bit more cost effective for the great swords. Uh, the Flagellants uh, did some decent shock damage to the Black Heart Corsairs on the charge, but then as that starts fight starts to even out as the charge bonus wears off the black art corsairs will be able to win that fight flagellants actually trading very very decently against the witch elves this is not a cost of tra cost effective trade for the witch elves in the slightest they're taking a ton of damage from a much cheaper unit meanwhile the state troops are uh, doing pretty well all things considered they're actually winning against a more expensive unit here this the other fights are much more even dread spears uh, and and empire spearmen seem to be very evenly matched as they slowly pick away at each other here we also have Balthazar Gelt over here casting a final transmutation on Malekith. You can see uh, it did a decent amount of damage, maybe 10% of his HP, but considering that was an overcast uh, final transmutation, it was, you know, not super effective in terms of magic. And all said and done, about 20% HP damage. What's more interesting, though, is it actually killed quite a few unit models for these Bleak Swords. So I want to do a little bit more testing with final transmutation on something like uh, a low model count cavalry, like a... a uh, you know, a uh, cold one night or something like that. You can see in the center, the flagellants did die, but in, in this pocket here, they were able to do pretty well against the witch elves. They definitely traded cost effectively here. In this matchup, they definitely did not trade cost effectively. I mean, Harganeth, uh, excuse me, the uh, Black Arc Corsairs are only, uh, what, 75 points more expensive, and they did not trade at that cost. So, really rough here. You can definitely see how the armor on the, uh, Black Arc Corsairs definitely works in their favor. The Swordsmen are going to lose out to the Bleak Swords over here, as expected, but it is a pretty cost-effective fight. They're able to very much hold their own here, so Swordsmen are going to be decent. The issue is that Swordsmen are going to struggle with the elite tier of Dark Elf Infantry. You can see the the uh, Great Swords just got completely messed up here, and considering their, um, let's see, they're 950 compared to 1200 and 1300 respectively for the Black Guard and the uh, Harganeth Executioners. So, uh, these guys have maybe 30% of their HP remaining, so mm, I don't know if that's really cost effective. This unit in particular here has about 50% of its HP remaining, and keep in mind the uh, Murderous Prowess did go off partway through this, which might have skewed some of the uh, test results, but, you know, Murderous Prowess is going to go off at some point during the battle, so it's not uh, that uncommon to, or that, um, what's the word I'm looking for? It's not going to affect the accuracy of these tests too much. Granted, always take tests like this with a grain of salt because you're never really going to get isolated one-on-one -on -one engagements like this in an actual battle. Well, you might, but it's very, very rare. So, uh, you know, just take these uh, tests with a grain of salt and use them, you know, appropriately um, in your own builds and so on. But yeah, as I was saying, the elite tier of the uh, Dark Elf Infantry is really what you're going to struggle with. Great Swords did not do enough damage to these guys to be cost-effective. And it's it's really really rough. Even the Harganeth, or excuse me, the Black Guard of Nagaron, which are not really an anti-infantry unit, really traded about at their cost in terms of uh, killing the Great Swords. Well, I'd say maybe a little above their cost, but they just mopped the floor with those Great Swords. It just was not even close. So rough time for the Empire. They, you know, obviously handgunners can do a lot of damage to guys like this. You guys saw how the uh, Dark Shards with shields really have a major advantage over handgunners. Of course, these guys, one or two volleys from them will shut down a new unit of great swords real quick. So it's, uh, you know, it's tough in this matchup. We're now going to test Reichsguard up against Cold One Knights here. As soon as the uh, fight with the Dread Spears and the uh, Empire Spear and Wraths wraps up. Empire Spearmen able to do very, very well for themselves. Again, the state troops trading pretty cost-effectively with the low-tier uh, Dark Elf units. It's the high-tier Dark Elf units that really give the Empire issues. So uh, let's go ahead and uh, get to this last test here as we do these uh, Cold One Knights up against Reichsguard. Now I am expecting Reichsguard to do fairly well here. They have a much better charge bonus and they do have more unit models. Cold One Cavalry only has 36 unit models, whereas a traditional cavalry has 45 unit models. Reichsguard also have much better charge bonus, 62 versus 56, and, uh, you know, uh, better sustained combat stats as well. So let's see what happens with Reichsguard up against the armor-piercing anti-large of the Cold One Knights. You can see immediately it's a very, very attritious trade. Um, considering the Reichsguard are 150 more expensive, or in the case of the Zintler's Reichsguard here, uh, you know, 
350 more expensive. This is really not a cost-effective trade. Um, they are able to somewhat do okay here, but they're losing to a unit that's less expensive. Cold One Knights are one unit that I think are a little bit underpriced. They probably should be 1100 maybe even 1150 to be on the same price point as the Reichsguard. I get that the Reichsguard are meant for an anti-infantry role, uh, as more, or more of a rather all-purpose shock cavalry, whereas the uh, Cold One Knights very much have that anti-large armor-piercing role. But still, um, you know, I'm just, uh, it's tough when you really can't trade cost effectively across the board here. It really makes it tough to come, come uh, you know, to win against a faction like the Dark Elves. So that's all for this particular test. Let's go ahead and jump into a few more here as we discuss a few more things. Um, let me just uh, scroll down here. And we'll go ahead and jump into this. So now we're going to be testing Knights of the Blazing Sun against Cold One Knights. These guys are 250 more expensive than the Cold One Knights, but I'm hoping that the higher charge bonus can help them win out here. We're also going to be testing some artillery, which is not really super relevant. Um, one note, though, of something that Creative Assembly needs to potentially address is Empire Great Cannons seem to be very inaccurate, especially when shooting at single model entities. They're decent against cavalry, but they really struggle at shooting at large single model entities, which uh, in the tabletop, at least, if I understand correctly, they were very, very good at. But uh, we really are here to see the Knights of the Blazing Sun up against these uh, Cold One Knights here. So let's go ahead and grab some cinematic action as the charges uh, go down here. So beautiful, beautiful stuff. Knights of the Blazing Sun are an amazing looking unit. You can see immediately though quite a few of them dying on that charge. They are able to do a substantial amount of damage to the Cold One Knights on the charge but taking it pretty heftily in return. However, they are mostly winning out it looks like. Um, I do believe they're going to be able to win out in this uh, engagement here, so let's uh, let's see what happens. And yeah, it looks like, uh, you know, with, once that charge bonus wore off, the anti-large armor piercing of the Cold One Knights is going to allow them to pull this back in what initially looked like a very favorable engagement for the Knights of the Blazing Sun. They actually are going to lose, and again, this is on a unit that's 250 points less expensive. So, you know, short of bringing Demigriff Knights with Halberds, there's really no cav you can take that are going to beat Cold One Knights. And again, Harganeth Executioners, you have uh, Blackguard of Nagarond, all these uh, really high-tier units are going to be a struggle. Even Blackheart Corsairs, to an extent, Greatswords, um, you know, will do okay against them, but it's going to be tough. They'll beat pretty much all your infantry except for Greatswords, and they're a unit that costs 600 points. I mean, it's, it's a tough time for the Empire, so... Uh, we were also going to test a Hydra up against the Demis, but that's not really a super relevant test, I don't think. So we'll go ahead and back out of this as we go ahead and take a look at just a couple more things here. So let me go ahead and find this uh, replay here. It's going to be somewhere over here. I believe it's this one, yes, okay. So now we're going to be testing Reichsguard once more up against the Cold One Knights just to make sure, you know, there wasn't too much RNG involved there. I also wanted to test the damage output of the Empire Cannon and the Luminarch of Hish against Black Dragons, so we've got a couple Black Dragons on the field as well. We're also going to be testing Reichsguard up against the Dark Elf Infantry to see if it performs well in its intended role as anti-infantry shock cavalry. So you can see in the tooltip, anti-infantry, even though they don't have a true bonus versus infantry. Let's see who, how they do in that role against some uh, armored Dark Elf infantry. So potentially they can help win that fight. So we'll go ahead and fast forward once again. Since we've already seen uh, this particular test again, I'm not going to focus on it too much. We're going to see pretty much the same result as we saw before, where the Reichsguard will win pretty decisively on the charge. But then once the armor-piercing anti-large of the Cold One Knight starts to kick in, they're going to lose that fight. So uh, the, the Reichsguard are able to do quite a bit of shock damage to Black Art Corsairs on the charge. Black Art Corsairs have 80 armor, which is pretty decent, but they do take quite a bit of shock damage as well. Same thing with these uh, Harganeth Executioners. We are able to do quite a bit of damage, and we're going to immediately cycle out and cycle back in. 
Granted, as you're pulling away here, you're probably going to be taking Dark Shard Fire, but still. Uh, it does look like Reichsguard performed pretty well in their intended anti-infantry role. They have taken a bit of damage from the Harganeth Executioners. Um, not a whole lot of damage from the Black Art Corsairs, obviously, because they don't have heavy AP. But, uh, you know, it does look like we're going to be able to do some damage. We'll, so we'll go ahead and fast forward as we cycle charge in a couple times here. You can see, though, that the Reichsguard are taking a pretty substantial amount of damage considering they're uh, taking out a unit they're designed to kill. Granted, this is a unit that does cost, uh, you know, about, oh, 50 more than the Reichsguard. So you would expect them to win maybe in sustained combat. But you can see here with the Dragon Breath, this this particular one lost. It was very, very close, but uh, in the center here, this one, this Reichsguard might be able to win out with one more cycle charge, but uh, the one on this flank here actually lost out. Granted, I wasn't super aggressive in cycling them in and out. If you were, you know, really on top of your micro, you could not take as much damage as I did there, but it is worth noting that Empire Cav is only 66 speed um, for Reichsguard, which is one of the slower heavy cav units in the game, so you do have to be aware of that. Uh, one thing to note here, as I was uh, saying before, the Empire Great Cannon needs a serious accuracy buff. I'm just going to go ahead and put it on fast forward and just watch how many shots this thing is going to whiff. So uh, there's a whiffed shot, uh, another whiffed shot there, another whiffed shot there. Granted, he is right on the edge of the range here, so you would expect the accuracy to be relatively poor. You can see the uh, Luminarch is able to do quite a bit of damage to the... Uh, Black Dragon, granted this is taking a long time, and in a battle you're not always going to get this amount of time to be able to fire away with artillery and so on. So uh, take this test with a grain of salt, but it, you know, the, the uh, Tempelhof Luminarch is doing okay. Clean miss there, but uh, finally I told uh, the person who was helping me with this test to uh, come forward and park his uh, dragon right here. So... That way I could maybe hit a few more shots, but the Empire Cannon, man, is just really struggles to hit single model entities here. It is going to start making more solid contact with Malekith now that he's a bit closer, but uh, we were able to kill this uh, dragon here. It did take most of the ammunition of the Templehof Luminarch. Um, and whereas the Templehof Luminarch, I would need to double check the cost of the Black Dragon, but I think it costs about the same. That's not really super cost effective and granted that took the entire battlefield to do uh you know would have taken the entire battle to do in the case of a real battle um you know that dragon's not just going to be sitting there the whole time letting you shoot it and if it's side strafing at all and you miss one or two shots you're not going to have enough ammo to take it down and yeah it's just tough you know the luminarch's a, a tricky unit to balance because it's just does so much damage and it's really easy to break but, uh, you know, it does. I th do think it maybe needs a n minor damage buff considering how much health the monsters of the New World have. And uh, we'll go ahead and continue fast forwarding here that this, this cannon has managed to get two chevrons so far. But it's, uh, again, this is taking almost the entire battle to do this much damage. And you're just not going to get this much time realistically, especially if you've invested pretty heavy in artillery and your opponent has uh, more you know, infantry or whatever. Granted, with the Empire, the idea is you have more infantry, um, you know, than the Dark Elves, but if you're just losing the infantry fight straight up hardcore to Harganeth Executioners and so on, it's going to be really tough for you to get enough time to really make this cannon pay off here. It can potentially pay off, but it takes a really long time, and Malekith, again, was not moving that entire time. He's just standing there letting the cannon shoot him, and it still took quite a while and most of the ammunition of the Great Canyon to take him down. So, you know, I'm not super sold on the tactical usage of the Great Cannon there to take down single model entities uh, like Malekith on a dragon. So let's go ahead and look at uh, a couple more things here. So next up, we're going to be looking at the raw damage output of handgunners as well as outriders versus dark shards and the uh, dark riders with repeater crossbows respectively so uh, sakarma has been helping me out with a few of these tests of the total war bro hammer channel so i definitely go check them out him and john ton run the total bro hammer channel so i'll leave a link down below to their channel if you guys want to go check them out both very good players some high level play so uh, we're going to go ahead and fast forward things here, and, uh, you know, this test isn't going to be super uh, accurate per se, but mostly what we're looking for here is how fast they do the damage. So can the uh, handgunners and the outriders keep up to the dark shards and the dark riders with the repeater crossbows in terms of damage output? So let's go ahead and see what happens. It's, uh, again, not the perfect test here, but uh, it's a pretty decent 
So we'll go ahead and leave it in fast forward as the uh, Outriders and the uh, Dark Riders start to pick away. You can see they're so far pretty even in terms of the amount of HP damage they're doing. Now the infantry engagement has started and, uh, you know, again, pretty inf pretty even. The handgunners have done a little bit more damage so far just because of their longer range. But uh, as the fight, uh, you know, kind of drags on, it'll even out a little bit. But um, one thing to note here is the infantry is doing a lot more damage. It does appear to be pretty close in terms of the amount of damage that the handgunners and the uh, dark shards are able to put out. You can see the handgunners and the dark shards actually routing one each at the same time. Then the handgunners routing another. Dark shards are going to be routing another shortly. So maybe the damage output on the handgunners is slightly higher. It's really tough to say. I mean, that was super close. So they're pretty much on par in terms of damage output. But again, keep in mind, handgunners have longer range. However, dark shards can fire over you know, over the front of units standing in front of them, which is a major, major difference. It's, I can't stress enough how big of a difference that makes. We'll talk a little bit more about how maybe they can balance that going forward. But uh, again, the uh, Outriders, which if you compare them one to one, Outriders have really garbage combat stats. I mean, just pitiful. 18 melee attack and 14 melee defense. Whereas if we look at the Dark Riders, 18 melee attack and 16 melee defense so they're pretty close in terms of stats um the uh dark riders with crossbows do have me better melee defense what's their charge bonus as well these guys have 20 these guys have 12 so a much better charge bonus as well so for a unit that costs less you get a damage output that's pretty close to the same if not a little bit higher it does look like we've actually got these guys on this side wavering before the outriders have got theirs wavering so it does look to be pretty close, um, you know, not too far ahead, but it does look like the Dark Riders might be slightly ahead there. It's too hard to say, but, uh, you know, for a unit that is objectively better in melee, costs 50 points less, and does the same damage in terms of ranged output, uh, I just don't see Outriders, you know. Uh, Dark Riders with repeater crossbows are just so much more cost-effective. And that's kind of the theme we've been seeing of kind of across the board here with the Empires. Their troops just aren't super cost-effective in a lot of situations. They really struggle with the elite tier infantry and uh, a lot of big monsters and stuff, which you wouldn't think, you know, in the last game they just they did a really good job of taking down high mon high value monsters with nets of Amatok and guns. But in game two, it's been a tough time for them. So we'll go ahead and fast forward through the end here as we route off the last couple dinos. And you can see it's very, very close in terms of the damage output of the Outriders and the Handgunners. So, you know, it's uh, it's tough. Let's go ahead and load up a couple more replays here. There's just one or two more things I want to look at very, very briefly. And then we'll talk about what changes I think are going to be coming in the reprisal update. So... Uh, let's see here. You know what? Uh, let's just jump straight to it. I was going to show you a few tests against the High Elves, but it's mostly more of the same. Um, they just lose super hard to the Elite Tier Infantry there. Um, you know what? Actually, there was one one specific um, thing I wanted to show you guys on this test here, so we'll go ahead and actually look at it just for, uh, for fun. But... Um, yeah, Great Swords will lose super hard to... Um, to things like uh, Swordmasters of Hoeth, just like they lose to Harganeth Executioners. They'll lose to Phoenix Guard even worse than they lose to Black Guard because, of course, Phoenix Guard do have that physical resistance. Um, we are also going to be testing on this the damage output of um, Hellblaster Volley Guns versus Dwarfen Organ Guns. So these are a similar type unit, that multi-shot armor-piercing artillery, Organ guns are 300 points cheaper than Hellblaster volley guns, so let's see how they perform side by side. We're also going to be testing flagellants up against spearmen, as well as great swords up against white lions, just to see how they perform there, see if they can perform cost effectively. So we'll go ahead and fast forward. There's been a lot of testing here, a lot to get through, but I definitely wanted to show this stuff off to you guys. Um, you know, definitely... Hopefully it's so helpful to someone somewhere, but uh, we're going to be starting over on this side here, and Flagellants uh, against High Elf Spearmen. Um, you know, Flagellants, you think, are going to be good in this matchup. You'd think they'd be good against low armor, but with the Martial Prowess active for the High Elf Spearmen, they just have so, low, so much melee defense that after that charge bonus from the Flagellants wears off, they're just not going to be able to make solid enough contact with the Spearmen there. White Lions against um, Great Swords. Great Swords winning there on the charge, uh, doing pretty decently, and uh, you know they should be able to win that win out in that fight. In in this 
fight here, it looks like they're not exactly trading cost effectively, a little more cost effective here, but you can see where if RNG doesn't exactly go in their favor, they do not trade cost effectively with a unit that costs, you know, 150 points less. Another thing to note here is um, a little bit of oddness going on with the artillery here. So these three Hellblaster volley guns, as well as these two organ guns, are all shooting for the flank of their of the Phoenix Guard that they're targeted on. So they're shooting like right here. Whereas this organ gun, you can see the one that's done already half HP damage to the unit of Phoenix Guard, is actually targeting in the center mass of the unit and doing a lot more damage as a result. So uh, first things first is we need to get a fix for this uh, targeting on both the organ guns and the Hellblaster volley gun it seems. The organ gun seems to be a little bit better. One out of three is actually targeting in the right spot, whereas none of the Hellblaster volley guns are targeting, you know, on the appropriate place on the unit. They are doing about the same damage as the ones who are targeting the edge of the uh, Phoenix Guard there. You can see the one in the center, the one who's targeting the center mass of those Phoenix Guard is doing just so much more damage. And keep in mind as well that the threat Hellblaster Volley Gun costs 300 points more than the Organ Gun. So this is not exactly cost effective, uh, or maybe it's too cost effective for the Organ Gun. You know, it's tough to say, but... Uh, White Lions are going to lose out here just barely in this fight to the Great Swords. That's pretty cost effective, I would say. Maybe, um, you know, a pretty decent amount of their health left. This one in the center is not nearly as cost effective. We are able to win there, but with much less health remaining. This one here, also the uh, Great Swords trading pretty well there. The one more shocking one, and the one that I specifically wanted to show you guys in this replay, is uh, the Flagellants are actually losing to Spearmen. And this is really bad. Flagellants are designed to counter low-armor infantry like Heil Spearmen. You would think they'd be designed to do well in this role, but they just don't stack up because Spearmen have such high base melee defense with that martial, uh, with, with the martial prowess active, you know, when they're at full health. They just don't take enough damage from the Flagellants, and they actually win out in that fight. So, very, very interesting stuff. Um, and the artillery engagement... You can see uh, kind of a just continuation of what I was saying before. It does look like the organ gun are doing uh, pretty much the same amount of damage, at least the ones that are targeted towards the edge of the unit, as the Hellblaster volley guns. So, uh, considering the Hellblaster volley guns are 300 more expensive, this is not cost effective at all. And I get that the dwarfs don't have cavalry, so they need to have better artillery and infantry to compensate, right? I get that, that's fine. But. You know, if you were to drop the Hellblaster Volley Gun even to 1100 rather than 1300, I think it would be a lot more cost effective. Um, you know, at that price range, I would have no problem taking it in a lot of different matchups. They definitely made it better with Mortal Empires. I just think it's not still not quite cost effective. If you were to drop the price again by 150 to 200 points, it would be perfect. You can see we're, we used all the ammo on a unit that costs 1300. And weren't able to kill a unit that costs the same, you know, shooting at, an, at a unit that this is supposedly designed to kill. So, I mean, the organ guns didn't kill them either, but the organ guns cost 300 points less than the Phoenix Guard, so you wouldn't expect them to be able to kill the entire unit. So, yeah, this is what I'm talking about in terms of the Empire just not being super cost effective in a lot of different situations. So, let's go ahead and go to the custom battle screen and we can kind of talk about some different things here. So... It is worth noting, we did run one more test. I'm not going to go through the whole thing now, but the Empire Swordsman actually did much better against the Spearmen than the Flagellants did, interestingly enough. So, Empire Swordsman actually have pretty decent combat stats at 32 attack and 32 defense. So, let's go ahead and look at them, actually. So, if we go to the custom battle screen here. So, Swordsmen, uh, they're pretty decent for their cost. Uh, you, uh, you know, it's just tough. 32 attack and 32 defense is pretty decent. Swordsmen generally tend to trade pretty cost-effectively. The issue is they're just a low-tier infantry. They're not going to do anything against the high-tier infantry like, uh, you know, Swordmasters of Hoeth and so on. Um, Flagellants seem a little bit, you know, they're definitely a great toolkit unit in the fact that they're unbreakable. But giving them an anti-infantry bonus, I think, would really, really help. If you look at other units in their class, like, uh, for example... If we go here, and, you know, obviously Plague Monks have anti-infantry. They have similar weapons. Uh, you know, Hargan, uh, the Black Art Corsairs have anti-infantry. War Dancers now have anti-infantry. A lot of different units in this class have anti-infantry damage, and I think that Flagellants would benefit from that quite a bit. You don't need a whole lot. Just even 5 to 10 bonus versus infantry would help a lot on these guys. So I do think that's one route you could go with them. 
Um, just maybe bumping up the combat stats of the Empire troops across the line would help. Great swords only having 30 attack and 30 defense means they don't really trade cost effectively in a lot of situations. Maybe just bumping up their melee attack and defense even by two to bring them on par with the Empire swordsmen in terms of their combat stats I think would help a lot. Reichsguard, I'm not sure why these guys got nerfed and cost increased at the same time, but uh, they can go back down to 1100 and I think they'd be just fine. They were cost effective before, but I don't think they were wildly overpowered by any means. Knights of the Blazing Sun costing 1250 I'm fine with. Again, Zentler's Reichsguard with the Reichsguard dropping 50 points. Again, you could drop them back down to 1300. Um, Outriders need better combat stats. Like, they just need, they need a better charge bonus. They need better melee defense. I mean, they just are garbage in melee. They also probably need a price reduction to 650 to be on par with the Dark Riders with repeater crossbows. Um, handgunners, I'm a little bit torn on how best to balance these guys because they can't fire over the, you know, um, their own units. Their pathing is a little bit screwed up, and those of you who have played a lot of battles in campaign or even multiplayer or whatever have probably noticed that the, uh, the arc of fire for the handgunners is actually worse than it was in Total War Warhammer 1. I'm not sure exactly what changed, but they have a lot harder time getting shots off, even to like the exposed flank of an infantry engagement. They just really, sometimes they'll just walk towards the engagement and end up in melee because they just can't get a clear line of sight, so they can just continuously walk forward. So I do think the line of sight issues need to be addressed a little bit there. But in terms of other balancing, if you just gave these guys like one or two more armor piercing damage per shot, it, I think it would make a big enough difference that they would be, uh, you know, back on top again. Um, what else can we look at here? Free Company, I really like. These guys are super cost effective in a lot of situations, so they don't really need too much tweaking, I don't think. Crossbowmen are a, a unit that's useless in like 90% of situations, <laughs> I would say. I'd much rather take Free Company Militia, so... Uh, maybe give these guys a little bit more missile damage as well. Maybe some longer range. I'm not really sure. Um, but just dropping the price down of Reichsguard, fixing the Outriders um, would definitely help quite a bit. Again, the Hellblaster Volley Gun at 1300. If you brought this guy down to 1100, I think it'd be a lot more cost effective. Take a look at the accuracy of the Great Cannons, the Empire Great Cannons, so they can actually hit single model entities more reliably. The steam tank isn't one that I've really talked too much about here, but I did end up doing some testing with it. It actually uh, more or less trades evenly with a Stegodon. Uh, so if we go in here and look, a Stegodon is uh, cheaper, right? It, uh, it does pretty much the same amount of damage in terms of its ranged output, except it actually does you know, poison damage as well. It's much, much better in melee. If we look at the combat stats here, 30 attack, 32 defense with 420 armor piercing damage, whereas the uh, steam tank here, 10 melee defense, 35 attack, and 150 armor piercing weapon strength for a unit that costs substantially more than a Stegodon. Stegodon 1700, Steam Tank is 2200 for a unit that is objectively worse, you know. I mean, granted, it does have much heavier weapon strength. It is unbreakable, but, I mean, uh, come on, guys. <laughs> I mean, it, I, I'm not really sure how best to balance that besides maybe increasing this cost on the Stegodon um, or just changing around the Steam Tank. You'd maybe buff its melee defense a little bit here, give it better weapon strength in melee. Um, you can do some different things to make it more cost-effective, but... Um, you know, it's just, it's tough. The Empire is just not really cost effective across the board. So there are some little niche picks I like, like the Warrior Priest uh, with the Flaming Banner. You can also take the Amber Wizard on a Griffin for some extra armor piercing monstrous damage. Uh, you know, there's definitely some decent picks there. And I do think the Empire has some tools that are a little bit underrated, especially like Reichsguard. Um, but it's just tough. You know, they just really don't trade cost effectively in a lot of situations. And you look at the tools that they have. Other factions have better tools that cost less, and I get that the Empire is kind of supposed to be the jack-of-all-trades faction, but whereas none of their stuff is really cost-effective, it makes it tough, <laughs> you know, uh, they're not even the jack-of-all-trades, they're more just bad at a lot of things. I mean, they still do have some good tools as it stands, they're not as bad as Bretonia, which we'll get to another, in another video, but they, uh, they do struggle, they definitely need some love, so hopefully uh, some of the suggestions I've 
suggested here get implemented. Tell me what you guys think in the comments down below. How would you bring the Empire into balance with the other factions in the game? Because they are, in my opinion, very clearly underpowered. So uh, let me know what you guys think in the comments section below. If you like this kind of content, like and subscribe. I keep it going with more Total War Warhammer 2 content every single day. We've got testing, online battles, lots of good stuff coming down the line. So stay tuned for more, and we'll see you next time.